Hi everyone. So now we will look at one more example. Uh, we will try to analyze the complexity of bubble sort algorithm, and we will talk about two different cases. One is the worst case, and one is the best case. Okay. So the best case would be the case in which your algorithm is going to run for minimum number of iterations. Okay. So minimum iterations we need to figure out when the algorithm will have minimum iterations. That would be the best case. Okay, and worst case would be the case in which the algorithm would have maximum number of iterations. Okay, so what we are given, we are going to given this code, given this logic that we know how to implement bubble sort, and what we can do is we can count the number of times these two loops are going to work together. Okay, so the bubble sort that we have, it's a slightly modified version of the bubble sort. Okay. And in this algorithm, what we are doing, we are taking a boolean variable swapped, and in the first iteration, what what is going to happen? Let's say the array is one, two, three, four, five. Then we say swapped is false, and we go from zero till this particular element, and we check whether one is greater than two, two is greater than three, three is greater than four, four is greater than five. The answer is none of these. Condition this true. So this if block will not execute, and what will happen? We will come out of this loop and we will check if swap is true. Break. So we are go basically going to break the outer loop. Okay. So what we did? This array was a sorted array. Okay. This array was a sorted array, and our loop will break. So that means in the best case, if your array is a sorted array, only the inner loop is going to run. For all values of j, starting from zero till n minus uh, one, and the outer loop is just going to run only once. So this is the best case. So we can say the best case complexity of this bubble sort is going to be order of n. Now let us talk about the worst case. The array is a reverse sorted array. Okay, so that would be the worst case, and that would involve the maximum number of swaps as well. Okay, let's say five, four, three, two, one. We are going to talk about worst case. So again, we need to count how many times these two loops will run together. When we will have uh, the worst case. So when i is zero, so we know j is going to run n minus one times. When i is one, it is going to run n minus two times. And when i is equal to n minus two, it is still going to run one or two times. Okay. So you can see it is going to form this series. So if I talk about the total work that we are going to do, this work is constant. This work is also constant. So effectively, these two loops are going to work for order of n square time because this we have already seen that this sums up to summation of n and multiplied by some constant work, and this turns out to be this complexity. Okay, because this is equal to n into n plus one by two. So I hope this is clear. So that this we also saw in the example that we uh, draw here that the bubble sort grows quadratically if input size changes. So that's all for this lecture. I hope you understood the complexity of bubble sort.